Now what we're going to get in in the seven questions is like this. This is the way I do it and it's very successful. What I want to get in is, I want to, what are the second five here of the sales call or the sale or the appointment? That's like five seconds into the game. That's not a lot. So I want to learn the doctor. I want to know the doctor. I want to know how he responds. So afterwards when I'm selling to him, I want to know when he's ready to be sold. So what we're going to do is, The first one, bless you, bless you. The first question you want to get in is the big picture, because we're not shoving products here. If you're shoving products, that's good, but we want to have like a policy in for them, a better future for the hospital. So the first question is like a big question. What's your story about? The second question, what you want to know is how you are happy. What do you like? What is the ideal situation? And the third question I want to get in is the worst case scenario. What they don't want. Probably if they don't have a policy, you want to get into like the blue arm and stuff like that. What I'm looking at, just look at that. Okay, so okay. What I'm looking at with Mike. What I'm looking at with Mike is how his facial, his facial expression is going smiling or is going down. Some people they go like, ah, that's okay. Some people they just do like, they're smiling. I want to see that. We're going to do a little exercise just on that. We're not going to do it with a big line. We're going to do it just in, with food, okay? So, Mike, what I want you to do is just look at them, don't say anything, and think of a food you really, really like. Just think of it. You see the facial expression? <laughs> and now, what I want you to do is get out of that. Think of a food you really don't like. You saw it? Now, what I want you to do is Give me a name of something that, and ask him a question, and you'll see on his face if he like if he likes it or not. So don't answer. No answer. Just, just facial expression. Just facial expression. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like or not? Is it food? What did food say? Uh, yeah. Is food is okay, but it's, it's if you see the same, if you see, if you see. If you see the same expression, yeah. it's okay. People, when they smile, they will have the same expression in food or something else. Come on, give me another one. Vanilla. Chocolate. Mm. Back orders. <laughs> <laughs> now a risky one. Vigo. <laughs> <laughs> so when I get my seven questions in, the first thing I want to know is, what does the doctor really like? And what does the doctor really hate? So when I'm talking to him, I can see on his facial expression if I'm going the right way, if I'm going the wrong way. Okay? So I want you to go in groups of three and get the food in or get something in and look at the facial expression. The most important thing is who you like. I'm just happy guy. Happy guy. You'll see that not only the mouth, but also the eyes. You'll see all kinds of things. You'll see that some people start to wiggle to something else. Try to notice something about the person you're interviewing. Okay? Thank you. Is that an easy exercise to do? No. You don't find it easy? No, no because uh, it's, <coughs> it's impossible to stay serious. I mean, I was yeah. with yeah. you guys and staring at me and <laughs> okay. I couldn't be serious. So you do it at home or you do it someplace yeah. else? Yeah. But for most, it went okay. Like, I could see that. 
That's what I want to have in second number five or second number six. I want to have like the general question because I'm not wanting to push the product. I just want to have them to actually know there is an IV policy that they get can it is possible to have an IV team in when they're not having it. And I want to see how they react. I want to see like the smiley face and I want to see like the worst case scenario. Now if you ask the questions like worst case scenario, that's a question like worst case scenario and they talk about 15 minutes, you'll listen for 15 minutes. Then you're in minute 15. Although sometimes it's like minute 5 or minute 6. They got up. Some people are like, tch, 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 that's the answer. Others just want to have like the story. It depends. It always depends. What I know is, after two years of doing that, you will have like the same answers all over the place. Because you know that products so well. So, first question is your story. Like third or second question is what's the ideal situation? And then the worst case scenario. These three questions want to have in. All the rest of the questions, you can use one of your seven questions. And it will depend. Normally in the sales, Training, they tell you like, you ask questions in the beginning and then you stop and then you start selling. But what we're doing here is, you ask questions all the way. Gathering intelligence is something you do until the end. You always start with the closing and you gather intelligence and you stay in rapport and you want them to stay between the lines, not talking about anything else. We can talk about holidays, great day, but here we're professionals. That's what we're doing. Okay? So that's the seven questions. The facial expressions. They got li literature on the expressions. When somebody is mad, how is he reacting? You get like books on that. So you can do research and get like these are like the six basic human expressions that are common all over the world. Not only in Belgium, not only in the Netherlands, not only in Luxembourg, it's like all over the world. Somebody's happy, always face up, eyebrows. Some people when they're happy, <laughs> might happen. Okay? Then you notice that one? That's an easy one. Sometimes you get like people that are totally out of emotion. They put their emotion in front of them and they're happy and they go, just like the little thing, and you have to notice it. So sometimes it's very difficult to notice the right things, but you're a sales professional. You know how to do that, don't you? <laughs> we did the food exercise. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to use a transition. Well, based on everything you just told me, it sounds like this is a perfect fit for you. Somebody is doing that and then going to the presentation, had a few questions in, and like, well, based on what you told me, this is a perfect fit for you. Ever done that? What sentence do you use? Yeah, first we phrase, uh, a little bit of the conversation. So, uh, as I understand it, blah, 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 blah. And then, Say the same phrase in, in Dutch you're using normally. Ja, dus dus normaal vat ik even samen van een stukje van het phrase even afstemmen en dan kom ik met en daarvoor hebben we of daarvoor zou dit misschien interessant kunnen zijn. Ja. So this is a level of murder. You can come up here. Are you just here? Give me some things of your. No, it's not work anymore. It's like work, work, don't yeah. work. Yeah. Have you the name in Dutch? Have you the name? Oh. Yeah, that is. Is it if you want to hold? Thank you. Don't talk to us. That's not Yeah. I'm happy. So. 
Can I actually that point to look? The point is Draw it, yeah. And it also don't the right. Right. Okay. But it's almost on the map. So what I want is like the ideal situation in. And worst case. What I'm going to ask here is about the worst case. I'm going to sit down so we're like a little bit in four. Here's the doctor. He can tell me whatever you want. So make up a story. So uh, tell me about it. Well, the worst case scenario for me would probably be if uh, we start something new and it turns out to be a disaster because the line of sepsis is all over the place and, and costs are rising. So I'm pretty keen on keeping things the way they are right now. Okay. If you keep it the way right now, what's the worst case there? Uh, the worst case there is that we don't uh, send people home in an early stage, for example. So we keep them in hospital a little bit longer than we probably should have. Should be. Well, it sounds okay to me. You got one case per person you kept in the hospital? Yeah, I got several. Several Even cases. Once. Well, for example, uh, somebody had a line in the neck, in the central line, and perhaps. What's her name? What I'm trying to do is get First into worst, 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 worst case scenario. It's just like, and that's normal because here we're like playing, acting. But if I'm with a doctor, if I want to hear the worst case scenario, I want to hear the worst case scenario of as is now. So I'm going to ask you, okay, you got this patient, it has a name, when did it happen? Something like that. Three months ago. Three months ago? I don't remember a patient's name. If he doesn't remember the patient's name, it's not a worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, they stick in your brain like glue. So you want to have the worst case scenario. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be going to, yeah. yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, well, our name was uh, right. Aditya Jans. Aditya Jans? Oh, how old was she? 18 years old. What happened? Well, she had to go to the ICU and stay longer and longer. And then she, uh, she missed out on her wedding. Oh my god. It's really bad. He's not telling me about his worst case scenario. If I get a doctor here, worst case scenario, this, the scenario, I got some scenarios in there, will sound like I had to go, had to put it in, came back down, already the nurse was cleaning up something, got the needle out again, so I had to go back up. Worst case scenarios are what they will explain during five minutes, what happened, how many times? Worst scenario, they just <laughs> put it in your face. You know what happened? Da, 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 da. <laughs> so they, they'll put that right into your face. Yeah. So that's what you want to really focusing on. That's the worst case scenario. From this worst case scenario, I want to remember a few words. And I want to use it. And if you're saying, based on everything you just told me, I'm not going to say the general idea, based on what you told me. Based on the experience you had with my dad. And if you don't want to have that experience anymore, then I think this story might just be perfect for you. See? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you, you see yeah. how, where I'm going? So what we want to do is we want to tie in the stories into this phrase. And you want the ideal situation, Catherine, you said like, what would the ideal situation be for them not to go back up or you had like a story over there? No, that's a... <laughs> no, it's okay. So, what would be ideal for you is maybe you can be home in the weekend with your kids. Or maybe you can shadow it so you got like a strict policy when you can people have come in to put in the IV, uh, put in the... Like, so we go like, if you really want to be able to plan your day, 
and be home in the weekend with your kids. And if you don't want that, you have to come back for Marika because, and that she will miss her wedding, then I think that this product will be a perfect, or this will be a perfect fit for you. You see how you tie it in? It's always a different sentence they use, always be like a different ideal situation, a different worst case situation. You want to take both, you want to tie them in, and then say like, and then you can go on to the presentation. Is that okay? Sounds easy? Yeah. Easy enough? Yes. <laughs> I want you to practice it. Go three people. One is going to be the doctor. If you have like, the worst case scenario is the actual scenario where they're in today. It's not the worst case scenario where they're in. You would be, yeah. If you want to have the worst case scenario, I ask, go for the pick easy, then this and this and this will happen. So you want to have the worst case scenario where they're actually living out now. Yeah. And you want to have the best case scenario where you actually are not doing this anymore. So, don't know the best case scenario, just will go look for the worst case. Is that okay? In teams of three, try to get the sentence in. Like, this is the best. If you want to have this, and you don't want to have this, then what I'm going to tell you is like a perfect fit or it's exactly right for you. Is that okay? Okay, what I want to say is, you're not going to use what's your worst case scenario. So, you have to get your own sentence in. So maybe I can ask you, but then what's the sentence you would use for a worst case scenario to know that? Well, if I, it depends. If I want the uh, best imaginable thing, I probably use worst case scenario. But if I wanted to uh, have the worst case he ever yeah, experienced, then I would ask, uh, what's the best thing you ever Experience. experience on this subject. So you can have that in. I don't know, Catherine, quel question do you pose now? Sebastian, what's wrong? Um, So what was the, the case that put you in an emotional state that was for you the worst to live with? Everybody will have like... She's writing down because she wants to know the questions. What the flags Worst case scenario, who saw you flags How would you put the worst case scenario? What's that? Nee, ik heel specifiek over uh, iemand die zich bij een anesthesist en die wil je komen vertellen over je wilt dat hij het ergste verhaal dat hij ooit meegemaakt heeft met blauwe armen enzovoort aan jou vertelt. Wat zou je vraag zijn die je stelt? En wie? Je kunt helpen. Welke patiënt is de patiënt? Wat is de patiënt? Hier Zie? In the beginning it's very difficult to get like the rap, but if we do like go around and you heard from somebody else, I can use that. No, I'm not going to use that. Oh, I can use that. That's the word. that's why it works. You gotta hear like 16 people. Somebody will have an answer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 
said here, if you do that in reality, when I do a consulting, I go, okay, so what's the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? How do you feel about that? How was the emotion? Okay, and how would it feel to... And then I just repeat what they got. I don't put anything in. Well, I think this will be perfect for you. Yes, yes, you got something. It's like totally excitement. You have to see it in practice to actually experience it. And so that's the transition. That's the other transition. And now we're going to the part of the presentation. Some people like to do long presentations. Some people like to do like short presentations. Some people like to stand up like I do here and do the presentation. Other people just want to sit and tell about the presentation. If you ask me how should I be doing the presentation? Well, if most sales are coming in and they don't do standing on presentation, I will do a standing on presentation. Why? Because when I'm standing, you're sitting, you're just back at school. And you can't help it. And you've been there a long time, so I got like the authority over you. And I really don't have the authority over you, even if you're like very strong, and just coming closer. So you have to look up. And I can do that with everybody. <laughs> you see how you went? That's, that's, that's how, and it's like a natural thing. So I prefer, if I can have a presentation, I will do on my pads, I will take a presentation, if I can, and go home, but on the pad, you can't see it. I prefer to be standing, having a board or something, because then I'm like authority, all over the place. That's actually a psychological effect that's used also in the furniture business. Yeah. When you have a director's table, mostly it sits higher, and the table where the other people are is lower. Yeah. And also the chairs are lower. That's a very common thing used in office furniture. Who, the, who likes it to do a <laughs> who likes it to do a presentation standing up? Okay, that's quite a lot of people. Who doesn't like it? So you can learn it, but you don't like to stand up, do you? Well, this is the reframe I did with Emily. When you're putting it in the pig and you're in theater, you have to stand up to explain to the doctor, don't you? So you're doing the stand-up presentation. Anyway, there are situations where you stand up because you can't sit down. So after a while you get used to it. But I prefer to stand up always. You can ask Luke and Susie. Every time I come in, I'll have an excuse to stand up and do a presentation. Every time. I'm giving all the way very good. Next time I come in, they go, no, thanks. <laughs> But that's how you do it. Standing up, doing a presentation. If I get a pad, I just want to hold it up here. I just, if I don't want to stand up, I want to put it in front of them, but a little bit more to me. I have to actually lean in to do that. Get them out of their comfort zone. That's what we want to do here. We're, we're here now. This is the presentation we're going to do. We're in minute one. Okay? Uh, it's possible that a doctor told you about something for like 40 minutes and you're in minute 40. Yeah. That's possible, yeah. Here we go. So this is the presentation here. Here we're going to take a little piece of the challenger sales. We're going to teach, we do the reframing they call that, and then rational drawing, in other words, we want to have like the rational thing in why they should start using or st start having an IV policy or an IVT, that's what we want to have in. And the other side is the emotional impact, and we already know a little bit about that, so we can co come back on that. This part, your solution, this we're going to split out even more with inside selling, okay? So we're not going to do the whole thing about the challenger, 
And I'm going to tell you how you do this and how you're going to do this. And this afternoon we're going to make one. Is that okay? Challenge sales. One of the problems we got is how do we make decisions? We have to know how a doctor makes decisions. If you don't know how he makes his or how she makes his decisions, you cannot start influencing them. So this is like a little bit of psychology. And psychology should, today is much further than it was like 20 years ago. But we know exactly what to tell and how to tell it to people so they buy it. They call that neuromarketing. I don't know if you ever heard of the neuroscience, neuromarketing, neuro whatever you want. We got people, we just put them in MREs, we make a scan of their head. Apple, they got the watch in, they make, put all, all the notes on your head, and then they show you the, the watch, and they go, that's the app, that's this, that's that. And inside your head is going, Shh. it's not going like that, so let's do it again. That's called neuroscience today. All big companies are using it. And they're very good at using it. So, another 10 years down the road, we'll be all doing what they want us to be doing. I'm sorry about that. This is called the Mercedes model. I put in this model for Jan. I know he, uh, he likes a Mercedes. A Mercedes. Mercedes. Mercedes is the yeah. Mercedes. you got this sign in it. This is the sign they used with the Egypts and the Greeks. This is the sign and this is the model that Maya Greeks used to have the typologies, the color typologies in. This is the basic typology thing. They call that you get internal processes and you get internal states. This internal state, internal process, and external behavior. You know the problem? You know the model? Okay. So basically what you got here is we can only move if internally our state, this is our emotions, are up and positive. We can only move is our internal process. That's our computer. Let's go put the logic in here. Is that's this one? It's up and positive. These are our beliefs, and we can only move if the monkey or the lizard in us is going. Yeah. So basically, you think you're going to help a doctor and say like, "Whoa!" And the doctor was. Yes, that sounds very reasonable. I think we're going to do that. Next day you come in, he's not doing it. You convince him on here. Here you didn't convince him, and this one, forget about it. So we think we're like logical people, and this is the model I got from myself. I do it like this. This is our. In reality, the model for myself is like this. I, 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 I. Mm -hmm. 
When I go, my kids will say like, no chocolate cookie. No, 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 no. They turn around and just get the sun. I was talking to this eye. This eye said to me, very congruently, yeah, no cookies, no cookies. No, no, no. And then this went to sleep, and then this one came up and got the cookies. We're just like kids. We have all these different things in us. It's like uh, psychologists, they have real problem with this. They think people are like that. So, you want to quit the drugs? Yes, I want to quit the drugs. You do therapy for an hour? Patient goes out? Straight, straighter. <laughs> this one goes to sleep, this one wakes up, down. The three things, these are just three of them. The three things are in emotions, logic, actually behavior. These three patterns come from the caveman. Once there was a caveman and he had like this brain, this little brain, it's like, like a little brain, goes up into your brain and it's like fight and flight, that's the one. Procreation, that's the one. It's like instant gratification. I want it, I want it now. And I want lots of it. If I talk about food, that's the one waking up. It's the lizard, it's like a chimp. I want it, I want it now. You know, anesthesiologists, they got this chimp in like really good. What they like is the big line, they want all these little things in so they can actually choose, go in with the echo machine. They love that stuff. Most people don't love it, but they shh, give me another, oh, you get another color, whoa, that's the one that's reacting on that. This is the lizard, this here is like a golden retriever. How are you going? I'm so happy. Some people have the golden retriever and they're always alive. Emotions are like waves, they come up and they go, they come up and they go. <laughs> okay, Emily? Yeah, 
Ui, oi. In mijn klas is het instrument. <laughs> In the last three years, they found that there is a sequence in people who are normal. So, if you're not normal, there is a different sequence, but if you're normal, basically the way you react is, first you go into the feeling, then you go into the thoughts, then we check in the feeling, then we go into behavior, and then we check in the feeling. In our three brains, they found there were receptors in them, and actually, the receptor for the feelings were connected with the heart. We got the same receptors around this heart. This is like three years ago they discovered this. If you got like the monkey in there or the lizard in there, the receptors are going here to your stomach, a little bit lower, to your belly. So actually, when you don't want to do something, you will feel it somewhere in your body. And if somebody dies and you really care for them, you will actually feel the pain in your heart. Although it's happening in your brain. So what I'm going to do is, I'm to get a picture about you selling and closing, if you want that. I'm going to check that picture in your feelings, and I'm going to check that picture in your, in your logic. I'm going to check it again in your feelings, I'm going to check it in how you would be doing it, changing the picture a little bit, and then back to the field. Is that okay? Mm. This is what you are actually going to do with a doctor. If you want to have a doctor behave, you want to have, yes, I will sign, and they will act on the signature, then this is what you're going to do. And you're like, wow, this is, whoa, whoa. When you close, very good, that's what's happening. It's a picture or sound, something else, into the feelings, into the logic, and into the behavior. And once that all three are okay, then they will react, or they will act. Otherwise, it will be, yeah, yeah, but... Okay? So if you do not know what you're doing, this could take you like months. If you know what you're doing, you can do it much quicker. Okay. Basically, what I wanted to do was get the... The emotion, the thoughts, and the behavior in. I think Sebastian had like a very concrete way of doing it, and I just heard about another one. So for women, it would be like I saw this dress; it's like 250 euros. Oh my god! But in my brain, I go like 250 euros. That, that's too much. So I picture myself. Oh, the emotion is going. And then I go into my brain, it's like 250, I cannot pay for that, I cannot pay for that. Well, actually, I can wear it next year and the year after. So it's like an investment for like 10 years. So then we got like, the feeling is okay, then the thoughts are okay, back to the feeling. Yeah, I still want it, still want it. And then you go like, how is that with behavior? And now I can see myself having this dress, walking. Ain't I beautiful? Ain't I beautiful on the beach? Yes, you are. Everybody's going like, wow! And my husband doesn't love me. And I go back to my feelings and say like, yes, it still feels great. I buy the, okay? And then I come home and I have to explain it. Okay? So what I do then, I get rid of the feeling, get rid of the day, and I start getting like, well, the reason I bought this. It's an investment, you know. And then my guy goes like... <laughs> now, this is women. Men do it totally different. They don't have all that in. Like Chris, a bike. How much was it? A good one, 5,000. 5,000 euros? For a bike. It's a cheap one. Yeah. So you got like 3,500 euros. And the emotion is there because you want to get, and then you go like, think three and a half thousand euros. This is really good back, you know. And I, I, I'm going to use it like multiple years. And if it's like three and a half thousand, four five thousand euros, once I use it for a year, and I want to have another bike. I can sell this for easily three thousand euros. 
Maybe 4,000 euros because I know how to sell now. <laughs> and then you go to it, yeah, so you see yourself on your bike doing things. In cars they do this all the time. Get into the car, so you feel yourself, you go and, and have a tour with it. And then you, you're lost. And then you come home and you go to your friends, oh, look at his back, and your friends go like, but most of Chris's friends also ride a bike. So they don't go like, Jesus. they go like, wow, 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 well done. So these doctors, they all got doctor friends doing the same thing, they go, wow. So that's what you got. That, that's what you want. We got an IV team in, and I got this and that and that, and the echo, and I can do this and that, and look at that. That's what, that's what they're doing. And the other doctor go like, I want that too. Yeah, but that's what. So the first people in will be the people like, I'm, I'm out of here. I, I want to have like an IV team. This is not happening anymore. The rest of the bunch are like, I think I have an IV team, and I don't have an IV team. I want the IV team. And they, that's what's going to happen. So if you get enough IV teams in from vegan with vegan products, the others will fall, and they don't want to have the other products in. They want to have like best. That's what's happening. So that, that's the, the thing that's happening now. It, it sounds a little bit more logic. Mm -hmm. So basically what you need to do is you have to make the outcome, the sun here, you have to make that image for them. And this is the thing. I go, here you go. If you make an image, for the emotion, the image can only exist about five things. It can exist of pictures in your head, sound in your ears, the behaving and the senses on your body. This is what makes up an emotion. So you know this is like one, two, three, four, five. If you want to have this in, there are also these five things, but they're different, a little bit different. The logic has another picture than a picture from the emotion. If you want to have a picture with both things in. And the logic, we call that internal digital. We have a little thing in imagination and we can actually say like, well, the logic in this is and it's like 5% of the brain, or 5% of our decisions, it's like that. If I ask you, the dress, why did you buy the dress? You come up with a reason, and the reason will be this one, but because you bought it with emotions and so on, this reason will suck anyway. That's why they got all these doctors and all these procedures in the hospital. What do you do? The mind wins. It happens. It is possible. <laughs> you know, I know a mind that always wins on these two things. I got a name for this person. He's called Dali Lama. He got total control over this one and this one. That's not fair. Okay. Ah, so you have to sit on your back. You can't pull it. And some doctors, they're really going. Some doctors, they got problems with emotions. And then you can put your emotion away. Just shut it up. If you got a heavy accident, then you shut it up automatically. And then you put it back up. If you don't put it back on, and then it's your thinking about the emotion. Then you got ideals in here. If you're stuck in this, without that, then you're like walking like that. You think that that's the way you should behave in the emotion. It's like you can have like five years of study on this, okay? Don't worry too much about it. What we want is we want to have like create this in here 
You want to have it create this? That's why you have 10 years of sales. You can actually learn all that. But I want to have the basics in. You want to make the picture. You want to make the right sound. You want to have everything in. Some people go here like smell. Not many doctors do that. Oh, they want to touch it. They want to touch everything. The sound. I got people that when they buy a house, they go like this. Oh, I like that sound. Yes, that's the perfect house for me. <laughs> but we do that all the time. We, we take things out of proportion. When I buy a car, well, as long as it's red, it's okay. I don't care about the rest. Is that okay? So, if you want to teach the first thing in a presentation, you want to have at least, you want to have the logic in. Because afterwards, they have to present it to the team, they have to present it to the other doctors, and they have to, and all these doctors go like, well, Sounds logic or not? You go like, well, here we got the stack of reports and investigations we did with Vigo. They'll never read it, but you need to get them in. If you get them in as soon as possible, they go like, okay, that's so annoying. Click, done. They will, like 5% of doctors that actually read them. You all work in hospitals? For those who worked in the hospital, how many doctors actually reads whatever they got in? <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> Mike says professor? Yeah, well, uh, uh, average uh, specialist needs to read 60 papers a week uh, if, he should, if he should do what he should be doing. Do it. Nobody can read 60 papers a week. I can, but that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. That's why I don't go into the medical profession, because you actually have to do it then. Yeah. But there are people who know how to do that. But most people, they go, you're nuts. So they're behind already. How do they keep updates? Well, that's easy. You come in. Yeah. You tell them what's new now. That's why you're an authority. That's why they like you. If you can tell them about more than just your product, they hang on your lips. Like, okay, tell me this. So in one domain, if you can have like studies in, know a little bit about it, you're an expert all over the place. Even for a doctor who has studied like so many years, that's how it works. That's why you want to be the expert. That's why you want to have a presentation of four minutes with all the numbers in it. They can go, yeah, done my homework, done it. And that's what we're going to make this afternoon. A presentation with all the numbers in it. And you go like, oh my God, do I have to make it? Well, if you make it, and they ask you, well, how many people, well, are actually happy they can go home? And you go like, well, we did a study in America and there seems like 40%, like this was like 3,704 people that on Wednesday afternoon were dismissed and this brought the hospital so many and so many. Just pinpoint it, really pinpoint Don't go on average, no, 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 just pinpoint it. Then you go, okay, click, done. Then move on, next question. You have to eliminate all the questions. In a presentation, we eliminate the basic questions that people have. So you don't have to get that in. Is that okay? Sounds reasonable? I don't know if it sounds reasonable. That's what we're going to do. We want to start and do this. And we want to picture the goal retriever, the, the worst case scenario back in. Because now we know the worst case how it works. And now we're going to do the next of the thing is this closing down all the way. <clears throat> Decision making patterns. The way <coughs> our brain, and I'm talking about this one, our computer, our computer makes 
actually makes a decision. Is that okay? We're going to, this is like the only way you make decisions. Is that okay, Catherine? Sit here. First of all, the first thing our brain needs are our computer. I'll talk about computer, about the golden retriever. The golden retriever is very easy. If I go like, yeah, 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 it starts going like, So, because I'm like a picture and I make the sound, so you'll see that somebody goes up and up and up, and before you know it, everybody's like, yeah, yeah. On the other hand, if somebody's like very down, and you go sit with them, you're getting down, and somebody else is getting down, before you know it, you have like a sales presentation, everybody goes, <laughs> it happens. So, you want to have like people. Sometimes you want to go like, ha, 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 why? As long as she's laughing, you hear the laughter and you start a little bit, not too much. So basically, the computer in here, it's not a golden retriever, it's a computer. It starts with a trigger. So you need to trigger the computer to get started. If you have a car and you start them in the morning, it's going like, that's a trigger to buy a new car. That's the way it works. So, if you have a doctor and everything is working in hospital, you don't have a buying trigger. They will never buy. So first you have to actually let them see the worst case scenario that that worst case is not normal. It's like, wow, you're still at that stage? Wow, you can't go home in the weekend? Woo! That, you need to get that trigger. You let through sales and through marketing. You get that trigger in. Wow, everybody's having an eye watch. I haven't got it yet. You want to get that trigger in. That's why they do it on television and in the cinema. And you get nuts. They get it in and in and in. So you need a trigger. Once you get the trigger, we call that operation. What the brain does is starting to get like information in. In other words, when you get into hospital, they get all these papers in, get you got in, and then another sales got in, and they, they get to get the picture right. All the information they want, they get it in here. What they do then, they call it test. They think in their head they got like this ideal situation, and they test if the product, the way Vigon is thinking, is correct with the way they are thinking. Is that a... Chris, you have an ideal bicycle in your head? <laughs> Somebody has an ideal dress in your head? Like that's the one? I got those books. It's not a dress. You got that? And then when I go and buy some, I, I go like, does it match? So this is like, in my head, the ideal situation. And I, whatever I got, Vigil comes by, give me this product. I compare. And I go like, okay, it's a match or it's a no match. If it's a match, then it's okay. You sign a contract. If it's a no match, I start all over. Basically, maybe the ideal situation in my head was too ideal, so I have to change that. Or maybe I don't have enough information, get other information that would help. Or maybe we don't need an IV team right now. We can actually wait a few years. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So if you want to sell products, the only thing you need to do is change this pattern of testing and make this picture. It starts with making the right picture. If you got the right picture, where only the products of Vigon can co competition, no, you don't have this, we don't, well, we have that, and that's important, and it's important, and then you have to influence this part. Get the picture right, we're going to get the picture right today, and tomorrow we're going to influence this part. Is there something about the big line that Vegan has and that the competition doesn't have? 
some you know feel of art. So if you can convince them here that that's an important part, or in the picture, like, and you use it for that, that, and that, and that is so important. If they take the decision and your competition comes in, then they don't stand a chance because this will be changed and they want to do that, the outcome, the ideal situation of being Sounds is that okay? Somebody has a question about that, you can I am clear this time? Yes. <laughs> Even from me. I'm happy, is it? Yeah. You got people, you got two problems in this decision. First of all, to actually influence this, the people has to be a little bit open to what you're telling them. You got people that are totally closed internally. I don't care, I'll decide for myself. So you can't get that in. It happens. You know? The, the yeah. trigger can be a certain frustration. Yeah. yeah. But we start That's with the sun. You want to have a sun up there. The sun is the IV team, is the IV policy they got, like the new thing in there. Yeah, I mean the first step, the trigger. Ah, the trigger be, that can... That could be a frustration. That can, yeah, frustration. Best of all is a frustration. In this case it will be a frustration. The worst case scenario you had, that's the frustration you want to get in here. We did the test about this, I'll, I'll, I'll tell about the test later. So basically, you got people, they don't want to hear about that. They'll take the decision totally internally. You cannot influence them. So, that happens. And then the other case scenario, is also worse, is they got this, and they say like, yeah, 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 you're right. Next morning, somebody else comes in, they change their mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next day, somebody else comes in, they change their mind, God, you know those people? They change their mind all the time. So if you close somebody down, they change their mind all the time. What you want to do is you want to close them down and want to actually sign a paper or something that they're committed to it. Otherwise, the next day you can start all over again. What we do is, and this is the best way to close a deal, you picture this and you give as less information as possible. Why? When I give an information in here, they start going like, oh, but then that could be a problem, and that could be a problem, and that could be a problem. So they start having problems all over the place. What I do, what I should want to do with the big line is, you close them. Once they're closed, and you go in to get your know, five big lines, you then, in the process, all the problems that come up, and they will come up, you start explaining them then. So if you get close without actually sell it, telling too much, it's better, because you will have to solve the problems anyway. But if you didn't close them here, all the problems come in, you're in for a treat from 3 to 4 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 months. And then the next one comes in and says, well, you can't only get Figo in, we need to have this one in and that. And then you start losing it. So you want to close them in your head, get like five big lines in, insert them, and then you want to explain all the problems and all the things that could happen. I don't want to have this one. Is there only like two criteria? That's okay with me. Once I sold them, I'll explain how it works. I'll get them the ideal situation or everything that's in. Is that okay? This is the computer working for you on the IV team. These are like 16 questions that will come up every time. They're in Dutch here. So you need to get a presentation in with these 16 questions. So I'm going to ask you to make a presentation and get an answer to these 16 questions. Is that okay? You can do it in team. The more specific you are, the better it is. 
If you go like complication going down, you have to tell me how much they go down from a study. Somebody has a study? Give me its number. Uh, for really 23% versus 8% I think. So the, IV, uh, the CVC uh, infection rate is 23% and the pig line rate is 8%. So that's the start of all. Minus 15. Minus 15. You want to get the numbers right. You want to say like, well, this study, and you want to name the study by name, has like 8% versus 23%. It's not 8%, it's 8.01%. The more accurate you are, the more impressed you will be. If you got like general number, they won't believe you. So if you give a presentation, I want you to have like these 16 things in. Because you always have those questions and you do it once and then it's done. And then a new study will come out and then you... But that will be like down the road. The first time you do a PICT and an IV, these are the questions in logic. Now, the emotions, look at that, isn't that a lovely day? That's an emotion for some people. You get that in. Other people, they go like, what a lovely baby. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, somebody who doesn't want to have kids, you want to have kids? This is how you play. <laughs> so what we want to do with the emotion is get the emotion from zero up all the way. Here is like a scale of one to six. The six are viewers. You want to have the emotion in two. So first we got in the logical aspect, and then we got in the emotional pattern. The emotional pattern, I did a study for Vigan on the emotional patterns. This is how it works for starting an IV team. We got all this in here. I put the study behind, in the back. So you can read it, it's in Dutch, but I think in every team that somebody can actually... You got some stories in there. This is how it actually happens time after time after time. Why doctors come in? I want the IV team now. Just explaining that. Basically what they do is they go in, get the blue arm in, after a while they have to get in, get in, get in, get in, and they get tired, they explode. Now it's done. Recognize the story? And it's the audience go like, I don't do this anymore. I want to have a policy in. You got one? You have somebody like that? No? So they explode. But we don't do the negatives for Vigon. So what I want to do for you is like, once they exploded, they have a few emotions in that actually trigger them to buy the products. One of the emotions is autonomy. They want to have their own IV team and it's their team. You got that? It's like the IV team, it's my team. Autonomy. So you want to have like in your ideal picture something that's going like the autonomy of the anesthesiologist. You want to have something like concentration and relaxation. This is a passion. When I got like in, the, I can work with all the big lines and I, I put them in. That's a passion thing for me. I concentrate, but at the same time, this is what I love to do. I got like the echo in. I got wow. That's for the peak easy concentration, relaxation. They think that the patient. Once they got it in, what experience, that's not, that's their thinking of freedom. 
the patient will be free, can do more freely, can go home in some instances. So they want to have a story about freedom in there. You want to have a story about that. They think because they did it, the privilege. And actually, and this is like the higher emotions, they think it's funny and it's pretty nice, so they're, they're smiling about it. Now this is the thing, if you're going in, you're going to make a pick line, you do it, the procedure once, twice, three times, you went in, you do the procedure three times, and they're like here in their feelings, when something goes wrong, they stop. You have to guide them until they get this feeling. Sounds okay? I come, once you do the presentation, I come by, I explain again and again and again. What I want you to do is, the action pattern is them signing, so that's afterwards we're going to do that. What I want you to do is make me a presentation where actually you got the ideal mission for the feeling and for the logic. You can do that in team. You got like an hour and a half to do that. So you can work in team. I want to have a presentation. The 16 questions should be in. Can be a PowerPoint, can be whatever you want. But I want to have a presentation. I want to get the numbers in as good as possible. About 10 minutes and all the things, all the 16 questions should be in it. All the emotions you need to be have. You want to have them in there. I'll come by, check out, explain some things. Is that okay? Sure. An hour and a half. Cool.